Good hello everyone and welcome to TTTBT, or Top 10 Toon Boom Tips. The word top is in there for no other reason than because people just making lists of 10 of things seems to be the way to go. And I'm being nothing more than just another filthy conformist. And I wanted another T word just so I could have an excuse to say TTTBT. You can turn on an auto save feature by going to preferences and under the general tab. Here there's two options, one to turn on the autosave and another, which is a good idea to turn on ask before saving. This will give a little pop-up window that will confirm that the program has indeed saved for you. Chuck it onto every 10 minutes and hopefully you won't be losing any more stuff. There can be any number of occasions where you would want to fill a whole bunch of frames randomly. You know, something flickering or jittering, or you just want spontaneity of some kind. This can be achieved by going to the X-Sheet view, selecting all of the frames that you want, right-clicking and going to Exposure and choosing Fill Cells Randomly. From here, have a look at the default names that the frames have been given. Select a range, how long you want the exposure to be held for each drawing, and turn on Whole Numbers. Press Apply, and you can see a random drawing has been chosen on every second frame, never going past seven. Every time you hit apply, it will reshuffle the drawing order. The paint bucket tool works the same way as it does in any other program, but it also has a lasso select, painting everything within a region. But it also has a bunch of sub tools. In tool properties, select the paint bucket and go to one of its different options. Paint unpainted will not affect any other artwork that already exists. Use this to fill large sequences quickly. If there's a sequence that you wanna fill with all the same thing, this is possible as well. With the paint bucket tool turned on, activate apply to multiple drawings. This will make the paint bucket affect the timeline. To see what you're going to affect, activate the onion skin of the layer you want and pull the bracket out to see the entire sequence. So now anything that we lasso select is what will be paint bucketed. It deactivates after every turn, so you don't keep accidentally filling things you don't want. When drawing sharp angles with the pencil tool, you can change the join section in tool properties to this option. And this will give all of your corners nice squared and sharp points. Did you know that with the brush or the pencil tool, if you hold down the O key and drag side to side, you can visually change the size of your brush. You're probably thinking it's the O key because of the shape of the cursor, but no, it's the O because that's the shape your face made when you just found out that this was a thing. If you're working with a layer that contains both drawings and keyframes, moving them around and keeping things separate can be really difficult. If you just want to copy a keyframe and not the drawing, too bad. But by right clicking on the timeline and going to timeline view, there are these three hidden buttons here. By default, both mode is turned on, and these other two represent just keyframes or just drawings. Now you can move drawings around without interfering with keyframe movement, and likewise with keyframes, not interfering with drawings. Not a fan of how Harmony typically makes line art all jagged and a bit pixely. You can make things permanently anti-alias by going to preferences under the OpenGL tab and turning on full scene anti-aliasing. After rebooting the program, you can see that everything has become a bit smoother. The quality of the anti-aliasing can be adjusted within preferences by adjusting the number of samples option. The higher you pump the value up, the smoother it will be. However, it does use more and more processing power. So it may be used to try and get used to the jagged look because it keeps the program stable and zippy and you can pop over to the render view by hitting the blue flower and test how things will look when they are smooth upon render. If you have a bunch of different layers going on and you're having trouble finding the right one, the O key is once again our friend. By selecting any given layer and then pressing the O key while up in the node view, it will zoom the layer in question to our field of view. Likewise can be done when selecting a node and pressing O on the timeline. It will zoom that to our focus of view. And finally, if you're having trouble finding anything at all, selecting the physical artwork and pressing the O key will of course, zoom to both. If you find yourself running out of undos, the number of steps backwards you can take can be adjusted under the general tab of preferences. The default is 50, but you can pump it up to something pretty, how, how far? No way, really? Surely that must just destroy the memory. Thank you for joining me for the first TTTBT. This is the spiritual successor to an old onion skin show called Feature Nuggets to bring together a whole bunch of small things into one place. Saves us all a bit of time, and I think we're more likely to stumble across features that may not have otherwise had a second glance. I hope something here was new to you, and I hope something was useful. Have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one.